Alex, you're back. How was your first day with Amy? It was a mixture of things, I suppose, Uncle Jack. How do you mean? Lots of people to meet, learn their names, get familiar with the site, learn all the health and safety rules, stuff like that. A bit overwhelming, eh? Just a bit. My boss Sam really knows her stuff, though. Oh yeah, how so? It turns out that she's ex-military, and so believes that anything that has to be done should be done as well as it can be done, whether it's cleaning a floor or knocking down a wall. Uh Uh-huh. So in order for her team to be excellent, she needs each individual to be excellent, which means well-trained, alert, ready to go, kitted out, knowing the plan and sticking to it. That all sounds very positive. That sounds familiar, too. It's a zero-code policy, she said. We want the number of accidents on site to remain zero. I suppose, really, you could apply the zero-code concept to crossing the road at night, couldn't you? How do you mean? Well, the four elements you just mentioned, staying alert, being ready to go, being kitted out properly and sticking to the plan, these are all you need to cross a road safely at night, aren't they? I still don't understand. Okay, the plan is, I want to cross this road safely and get to the other side, right? Okay, got it, that's the plan. It's night time, so I need to be visible in order to be safe. So reflective clothing would be the appropriate kit, right? Ah, I get it. And in order to cross the road, I have to remain alert for any dangers like road traffic and be ready to go when all the conditions are safe. Exactly. I suppose the main difference is that crossing a busy road is obviously dangerous, so it's easy to remain alert in the face of clear and present danger. Obviously. But it's the other things like... Well, take your examples of cleaning a floor or knocking down a wall. Some chemicals for cleaning should never be mixed, as they could give off dangerous fumes or cause damage or possibly even a fire. Really? Oh yes. If you mix bleach and chlorine, the effects can be devastating. Wow. And knocking down a wall? Can you think of any potential hazards there? Let's see. I'd need to wear protective goggles for my eyes, a hard hat for my head, Gloves, protective clothing, boots. Hmm, what else? What about making sure there's no one standing behind the wall you're about to knock down? I didn't think of that. It happens. But listen, I've been working for Amy for years now, and the Zero Code makes one thing very clear. If in doubt, shout out. Any supervisor would rather answer a stupid question than risk a stupid accident. So don't be embarrassed. No one expects you to know everything. That's good advice, I'll remember that. What else did your boss have to tell you today? She reminded me that I'm on a three-month probation period and that targets and progress will be reviewed every 30 days, which is why it's called the 30-60-90 review programme. How does that work? She said that while I could expect to have one-to-ones at any time, she or one of her senior staff will set targets to me and these will be reviewed after 30 days. If they feel I've met or exceeded their expectations, then I'll be deemed to be trained and responsible enough for the next target. And if not, then we will offer more support to help me reach it. That's really good. They sound very supportive. Sam seems really decent, I must say. I get the impression that she wants me to succeed. I'd be a bit worried about waiting for 30 days to find out if you've met the standards they have set for you, though. Sam said not to wait until those meetings. She said that if I was worried or unsure about anything, then I should shout out to her or one of her senior staff and get it sorted out as soon as possible. So, what are your targets for your first 30 days, do you know? Yeah, I took notes, actually. Very sensible. In the first week, it will be a lot of introductions to people. Find out who does what, that sort of thing. There will be lots of information about key policies on site, best practices and expected behaviour. That sounds about right. You need to know who's who and the law of the land, don't you? The rest of the 30 days will probably be more of the same, but gaining more practical experience. That doesn't sound too bad. Are you okay with that? I get a good feeling from my boss, and everyone else on the team I've met so far seem decent, so I think I'll be okay. The fact that you find the rest of the team friendly is a good indication that you're going to fit in. Part of any probation period is making sure that the new person isn't a disruptive influence, but one that can fit in and complement the team. So I definitely encourage you to do what you've been doing so far. Be yourself. Be interested in what's going on, and make yourself available to anyone as long as it doesn't conflict with any instructions given by your supervisor. Thanks, Uncle Jack. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Good. So that's the first week and the first 30 days. 
Do you know what else is expected for you 30 days after that? That's actually easier in a way than the first 30 days. With all the practice and supervision given so far, I'll be expected to focus more on collaboration and taking on more responsibilities. But when we get to that point, Sam says she'll have prepared me for that stage. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm not overly worried. And what about the last 30 days of your 90-day probation? Any ideas as to what's going on there? It gets a bit vague there because everyone on every job is different, she said. I'm told she'll be getting constant feedback from senior personnel to get a sense of my suitability and my attitude to safety and so on. If all that goes well, then there'll be a final review on my performance, conduct and attendance. So then essentially, they just want to know that you're sensible, responsible, fit in with the team and can do the job you've been employed to do. That's the way I see it, yeah. You know, health and safety are a really big deal at Amy. And you work with me on a few sites, so I'm sure you'll be fine on that score. Thanks. But did they mention HSEQ? HSEQ? Sounds vaguely familiar. Remind me. HSEQ stands for Health, Safety, Environment and Quality. Amy has its own HSEQ team and has a number of policies which commit Amy to seek continuous improvement and preventing injury and ill health. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Uh, not yet. Keep going. Okay, the HSEQ team have policies you'll need to be familiar with, particularly while you're on probation. Not because you'll be questioned on them, and not because they stop being important after your probation, but because the policies give you a sense of the kind of culture you're working in, and you need to adopt that culture and mindset as soon as you can. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but how do I find all this stuff out? If you want to, you can search for the Amy Code online, and you'll find documents in our policies for alcohol and drugs, inclusion policy, social value, modern slavery, and loads more. Or you could just ask a line manager. I'm sure they'll be able to point you in the right direction. It seems like a lot of effort, Uncle Jack. Well, knowledge is power, they say. The more information you have, the better off you'll be. And if you don't know you're crossing a particular line with Amy, you could be in serious trouble. How do you mean? Well, suppose you're going to work on a Friday, and you know you're going to meet up with friends after work. Uh Uh-huh. During your lunch break, you decide to buy a few cans of beer to drink after work. You're in the company van and you place the beer safely in the back. On your way back to site, you telephone your colleagues and ask if they want anything from the shops. Do you think you've broken any policies yet? Hmm, I suppose we're probably not allowed to transport alcohol in company vehicles and we shouldn't use our lunch breaks for shopping for colleagues. Two very good guesses, but actually no, that's not the problem. Sealed containers of alcohol for later consumption, that's not a problem. Drinking on site or any drug misuse would be extremely serious, and you'd probably lose your job. I suppose you would. The other matter is that Amy has a very strict mobile phone policy, which means you must not make calls, even on your own phone while driving. That's okay, I've got a hands-free kit. When you read the policy, you'll find that that includes using hand-free kits too. That seems a bit harsh. Well, as we said a minute ago, Amy takes health and safety very seriously. Use of a mobile phone has been shown to have the same effect as drinking with two pints of beer in your system. And you wouldn't drink and drive, would you? No, of course not. Well, it's sort of the same thing. I see that now. Do you see what I mean about the mindset of the company? It's not always obvious why policies are there, but they do exist. And they have been carefully thought out to be consistent with the values and goals of the company. In the end, they're all designed to promote well-being and prevent accidents. There's a lot more to this job than I first realised. There is. That's why Amy invests so much in training and development. Do they? Oh yes, they have a training team, an online training library, and courses designed to keep you up to date with the current codes of practice, staying safe and developing you for future career growth. Like management courses? Could be, yes. You said these courses were online? Yes. I won't be working in an office or have a computer. What do I do about my training? Your line manager will work it out with you, I'm sure. My boss gives us these toolbox talks. What are toolbox talks? They're a sort of briefing that covers the essentials that will be covered on online courses. They usually take about five or ten minutes to deliver, and we can ask questions we need to ask. If the boss doesn't know, they go away and find out and tell us later. Are these toolbox talks any good? They're a good start. And if more information is needed, or there's a mandatory online class, 
Then special arrangements are made to make sure that we have attended and understand the content. That sounds time-consuming. Most courses are quite short, in fact, and they're broken up into small manageable chunks. They're not hours and hours long. Anyway, most of the training is gathered experientially. What does that mean? That most of the time you'll be learning by watching experienced people do the job properly and doing the job as you've been taught by your colleagues. Oh, that's good then. Amy is very keen to make every employee as confident and competent in the workplace as they can. They're not looking for robots, but people who understand their role and enjoy doing it well. I see. I highly recommend you search for the phrase Freedom to Perform on Amy's website. There are some exciting ideas about personal empowerment and achievement there. Okay, I will. So do you feel you've got a good sense as to what's going to happen and what's expected of you during your 90-day probation period? Yeah, I think I've got it. Every 30 days is going to be reviewed to make sure I'm meeting the set objectives. Uh Uh-huh. In the first week, I'll be introduced to various people, equipment, and the site I'm working in. Yes. There will almost certainly be some paperwork for HR and possibly some equipment to sign for. Possibly, yes. And I can expect the bulk of my training to be taken up by watching and doing what others do. And more specific topics are covered through toolbox talks given by my line manager. Or some other suitable person, that's right. What am I forgetting? Oh yes, HSEQ is Health, Safety, Environment and Quality. And there are policies for just about everything. And I should probably find these by searching for the Amy code online so I can get a sense of what Amy expects of me and my colleagues, right? Perfect, well done. I think the policy documents are going to be the biggest challenge, aren't they? Everything else sort of takes care of itself, doesn't it? I think you're right, but don't forget, you can always ask for a one-to-one with your manager or supervisor if you're not sure about anything. One of the key takeaways with Zero Code is, if in doubt, shout out. So bear that in mind if you ever feel unsure about instructions or what you should be doing. I will. Thanks. No problem. I'm glad you've enjoyed your first day at Amy.